This, my friends, is the Atari 5200. This was released in 1982 and was meant to be a replacement for the Atari 2600. There's a lot of excellent games available for the 5200. However, this is the last game console I will recommend to anyone. Unless you grew up with one in the past and want to relive the experience, or unless you're a die-hard collector, or unless you're crazy, you don't want one of these. Buy a ColecoVision instead, buy a Vectrex, buy an Intellivision, anything but the 5200, unless you're serious about it. Let's just take a look at this thing, it's enormous. This is the largest game console that I own. And you know I have just about every game console. Let's see, let's give it a measurement here. Fifteen inches wide and about 13 inches tall. I already measured that. It's so big I can barely fit the thing into frame here. It fills up my entire workbench. Just to put this in perspective, this is an Atari 5200 game cartridge. This is a Nintendo DS, which is roughly the same size as an Atari 5200 game cartridge. The actual Atari 5200 game cartridges are really cool. These are some of my favorite cartridges. They're enormous. They're very well made. They have this cool grippy thing on the side and you could put the controller overlay back there. They fit into the 5200 very well. You just gently push it into place. Sometimes other companies like Activision would publish slightly different styles of game cartridges. There's had these little things up top so you could grip it from the top and pull it out. There's one that was published by Sega, which is also slightly different. Lots of cool games to collect for the 5200. There's two different Atari 5200 models out there. This is the one you definitely don't want, the four controller model. You can plug four Atari 5200 controllers into this thing, and it has a proprietary special Atari 5200 AC power adapter and television connector switch, whatever you call it. Basically, it's this thing here. This wire carries both the power and the audio and video signal on one cable. One cable. I've never seen anything do that before. And that's, that's a good thing because it sucks. Okay, so why does it suck? Well, you know how the Atari 2600 and ColecoVision and, and most other old school game consoles worked with one of these things? Where you'd run the AV output from your game console in here and then run from this thing to the television or the VCR or you could use this to hook up to an older television. Well, the 5200 does not work with one of these. That would be too easy. At least this model of the 5200 does not work with one of these, the four controller model. It uses its own special system. Most game consoles have their own power supply that plugs right into the game console. Not this one. This one has its own proprietary thing that does this and runs the power through the same device. It, it, makes, it makes my head hurt. Let's take a look at this. All right, here, here's the power supply for the 5200. This part plugs into the wall, pretty standard. And here's the part that normally would plug into the back of the game console, but it doesn't do that. You have to use this thing. Yeah, this thing plugs into your television or your VCR, but it also takes the power from the power supply. And we still haven't even hooked it up to the 5200 yet. Take this cable from the Atari 5200 and plug it in to there. So now this is sending the Atari 5200 power while the 5200 is sending this thing, the audio and video signal, which then goes to your television. Who designed this? I, as I understand it, the two controller model of the Atari 5200, which I do not have and I've never actually seen, uh, does not use this. It uses a standard one like the Atari 2600 would use. But th this big bulky four controller model uses this which is just absurd. I can't believe this even still works, but it does. All of the classic game room reviews for Atari 5200 games use this thing. So it does work for what that's worth. Here's the owner's manual, and it's like they knew they had a problem with this thing when they designed it because there's about 10 pages telling you how to hook it up.
very poorly designed. You may be asking, why did you buy this model instead of the two controller model which uses normal connections? Because this one came with a huge stack of games from eBay. And that saves money. And I'll recommend that for anybody buying an Atari 5200, 2600, ColecoVision, NES, whatever. Buy one that comes with a bunch of games because you'll save some money on shipping and you'll probably get the games for a lot less as well. It's got this huge door up here. I guess so you could put your controllers in there. Sony PSP. Nintendo DS. Still have room. Tape measure. About 95% of this review has been negative so far. It sounds like I hate this thing, but I don't. Actually, I like the 5200, but I'm a serious old school game enthusiast, so I'll put up with some crap to enjoy some good video games. And many of the Atari 5200 games are awesome. Here's a catalog showing you some games. It's not just a game console that has slightly better graphics from the Atari 2600. Games like Pac-Man are dramatically better, and Galaxian. Or at least they would be, if it were not for the horrendous, god-awful, terrible Atari 5200 controller. This is the worst video game controller that I've ever seen. The Atari 5200 controller, the non-self-centering, analog joystick, button-breaking piece of junk that works with the 5200. This wouldn't be that much of a problem were it easy to replace, like the Atari 2600 joysticks. But there aren't that many aftermarket 5200 controllers, and most of these that were original, have broken, need to be repaired, they're expensive. It can be done, you can buy yourself another one, look, it doesn't even <laughs> center correctly. You can buy a replacement one, or at least a refurb one. You can get an expensive aftermarket one on eBay. It's, it's just a pain in the ass. Terrible, terrible controller. And it makes this game console, which has some very nice games, inaccessible to people who don't want to spend some more money and buy a real controller, or buy a better refurb controller. Big problem with the 5200. So after all of that, do you still want one of these things? Well, there are some really good games on the 5200, like the 5200 version of Pole Position, The Dreadnought Factor, a really nice game, Hero on the Atari 5200, Buck Rogers, Planet of Zoom, and Kangaroo. You can have a lot of fun with the 5200, but you're just going to pay some more money to enjoy it. There's a lot of games out there for the 5200. It's not exactly a rare system to collect for, but it's not as affordable or easy to find games and accessories as it is for the Atari 2600 or the Sega Genesis or NES. It's not a really popular game system, but not a terribly obscure one either. And many of the games that you get for the 5200 are also available on other game consoles like the ColecoVision and the Intellivision and the 2600. Games like Qbert. You don't need a 5200 to play Qbert, but you can play Qbert on the 5200. That's the Atari 5200, which is generally considered a huge commercial failure, and you can see why. So why do you want one? I don't know why you want one. Why did I want one? Well, aside from the fact that I produce classic game room, I wanted one because I did not have one back in the day. I knew some kids that had a 5200 when I had my Atari 2600 and I was always jealous because they had marginally better graphics. But in the, in the end, it's really not all that much better than a 2600. In fact, I think the Atari 2600 is the uh, better game console to own. Even today, the 2600 has more games, more accessories. It's just as much fun. But the 5200 is a serious collector's system and you can have a great time collecting and playing games for it if you're serious about it, if you have the money to collect for it. Games like this one, Buck Rogers, Planet of Zoom, are awesome on the 5200, and games like this make it worth owning. Because I'm going to forget they're in here. Then I'm gonna be looking all over 
for my PSP and my DS and my tape measure. And the whole time they'd be stuck in my Atari 5200.